Here's a story for you that really bites. Why no aquarium in the world has a great white shark. Even if you absolutely love aquariums and have been to dozens of them, there's one sea creature you'll never ever come across there. Not a single aquarium in the world has a great white shark. At this point, you might be wondering why that is. Is the great white not cool enough to be put on display? Are people afraid of being attacked, even when these animals are confined within thick walls made of special glass? Eh, not exactly. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button to stay with us on the Bright Side of Life, where you'll see this and tons of other mysteries revealed. First of all, let's see if you can remember what a great white shark looks like so that you can distinguish it from any other shark species. You know, in case you happen to encounter one, hopefully not face-to-face, -face, of course, because then you'll need a bigger boat. These massive fish can be spotted in cool coastal waters all over the world. Great white sharks can be gray, brownish, or almost black, but their underbelly is always white, hence the name. They usually grow about 15 feet in length, although the largest members of this species can get as big as 20 feet long. As for their weight, it can reach a whopping 7,000 pounds. They use their extremely strong tails to propel their bodies through the water at a top speed of 35 miles an hour. The mouth of a great white shark is amazingly well-equipped and decorated, decorated with 300 razor-sharp teeth. These triangular choppers are arranged in six and sometimes even seven rows. Imagine having to floss between all those teeth. A lot of people think that these gigantic predators love dining on human flesh and are just lurking out there in the depths, waiting for a chance to attack some unfortunate individual. Surprisingly enough, human isn't on a Great White's menu. In general, there are no more than 10 attacks a year. And even so, scientists are sure that the sharks don't hunt people down to eat them. They're just too darn curious to pass up a little sample bite is all. After that, they often swim away. I'm sure you feel much better about shark attacks now, don't you? Anyway, if great white sharks aren't kept in aquariums because of the danger they present to visitors, then what is the reason? Well, it's actually quite tragic. Great whites can't stand captivity and simply die when contained. There have been plenty of attempts to hold these creatures captive. In 1955, the first great white was captured and sent to marine land of the Pacific in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, the animal didn't even make it through one day at the ocean area. Yet people still kept trying to tame the king of the sea. Up until 2003, there had been 25 attempts to keep the animal in captivity. But all of them ended very quickly in tragedy. For example, in 1992, a young shark, no more than a year old, was brought to the Steinhardt Aquarium in San Francisco and transferred to a 100,000-gallon tank. It died of shock within a day. The SeaWorld in San Diego managed to keep a great white for 16 days back in 2003, but they ended up deciding to release the animal back into the ocean. The longest a shark has ever stayed in an aquarium was 2004. The Monterey Bay Aquarium managed to keep a female great white for over six months. She lived in a 1.2 million gallon open sea exhibit and even grew 14 inches over the duration of her stay. The shark eventually had to be released though, because she'd attacked and killed all the other sharks in the exhibit. Well, it's what they do. The same aquarium had several more great whites over the years. Some of them stayed for 11 days, some managed to hold on for 5 months. But all of them had to be released due to different reasons. A couple of sharks became too big for their britches, I mean their tanks, while several others started displaying unhealthy behavior. They'd refuse to eat or would swim into the sides of their tanks. One had to be released because it had become too lively and playful for its own good. As for one shark that was released in 2011, it seemed fine in the aquarium, but died just a week after being set free. The most recent case of a great white being held in captivity was in Japan's Okinawa Hiromi Aquarium in 2016. The animal stopped eating and just swam into the sides of the tank. Just three days after its arrival, the shark simply sank to the bottom. All attempts to revive it were unsuccessful. There could be only one cause of death – captivity. So what is it that makes this species, unlike its relatives, 
suffer so much from being locked up. Scientists still don't know much about the great white shark, but they have come up with several theories. 1. Depression Great whites live as long as humans do. There are no obvious reasons why healthy sharks should pass away after just a couple of days in captivity. Therefore, the reasons seem to be entirely psychological. Believe it or not, depression and shock can bring these powerful creatures down. 2. Lack of space Big fish need a lot of space, and sharks are no different. A shark's body is shaped like a torpedo for a reason. It can move faster over long distances without too much effort. In fact, great whites can make the 6,900-mile journey from Australia to Africa in just 99 days. And since they're moving at an average speed of 25 miles per hour, that means they leap an astounding 25 feet out of the water. Obviously, no aquarium in the world can provide the animal with these sorts of conditions. So, captive sharks often swim into the sides of their tank in failed attempts to behave as usual. 3. Respiratory problems Have you ever heard that sharks need to keep moving in order to stay alive? Well, this isn't true about just any shark species. It definitely is when it comes to the great white. This species is an obligate ram breather, which means that it can breathe best only when there's a constant flow of water through its gills. In a tank, great whites can't move freely, so they develop problems with their respiratory system. What's more, a shark can suffer from hypoxia or a deficiency of oxygen. The thing is that these sharks increase their energy by swimming faster and opening their mouth wider. And while this may seem counterproductive, that's how it works with obligate ram breathers. That's why sharks that don't have enough space to maneuver can choke to death from a lack of oxygen. 4. Hunger Believe it or not, great white sharks are picky eaters. Since they need to hunt down their prey and eat it alive, they often refuse to eat in captivity. They basically don't want to be spoon-fed by humans. Well, if they're starving, they might agree to eat whatever their human captor is offering, but it makes them depressed. Because of this, they eventually lose their appetite as well as their entire will to live. Perhaps it's the thrill of the hunt they miss most. Number 5. The wrong water salinity You can't even imagine how hard it is to mimic the ocean's unique water composition. That may be the reason why, according to some experts, sharks feel so bad when held in aquariums. As you can see, it's a really bad idea to keep these amazing and powerful creatures literally locked up like a caged animal. Not only does it kill the poor things, it's super expensive for aquariums, and it has a highly negative impact on the oceans themselves. Great white sharks are extremely important for keeping the ecological balance in the oceans. Losing just one shark endangers the entire ecosystem. Unfortunately, this is becoming an ever-increasing problem as the great white shark is a species at threat of extinction. There are just about 3,500 of them left in the world. The reason for such a dramatic state of events all comes down to poaching. Some parts of a great white's body are in high demand on the black market and go for a crazy high price. The shark's fins, for instance, can cost huge amounts of money because they're used to make some sort of fancy soup at overpriced banquets in Asia. This demand has led to shark finning, which is when poachers catch a shark, cut off its fins, and throw the animal back into the open ocean. As a result, each year, millions of injured sharks die from either blood loss or being attacked by other predators, just so rich people can have a bowl of soup. Their skin is used to make clothing and accessories, and an oil called squalene is extracted from their liver to make cosmetic and pharmaceutical products. They have to kill 3,000 sharks to produce a ton of this substance. We can't forget about their teeth, of course. Tourists love buying pendants made from shark teeth. This practice is so widespread that the price of a particularly big tooth can reach $1,000, and a jaw can be sold for $35,000. It's totally illegal to kill these creatures, and all kinds of laws and punishments have been put in place. But as long as it's a lucrative business, poachers won't stop hunting these magnificent, but sadly, not so numerous ocean dwellers. To save the last representatives of the great white species, it comes down to us. 
people must change their attitude and their desire for products made from murdered sharks. Otherwise, the day will come when people will say, Remember when there used to be great white sharks? If you think that people shouldn't try to capture great whites, even for educational purposes, hit that like button. And if you know any other endangered species on the brink of extinction, write about them in the comments below. What, in your opinion, can be done to save them? See you next time!